Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. I sat down with Bridget Jeffries a while ago, and after asking her what she was working on, we got into a great chat about horror and the themes that modern and classic horror uses in TTRPG gaming. I'm going to jump across to that chat in just a moment, but first remember to subscribe to the Chaosium YouTube channel. It helps us a lot, and it lets us make more content like this. Thanks. So games, games, games. Lots of fun things going on with games. Uh, I just finished up the Rivers of Lundin playtesting. That was a lot of fun. We had a, a good time jumping into that world and that setting, which I'm completely unfamiliar with. Haven't read the books, haven't seen the novels, haven't done anything. So that was exciting to you know dance into a different playground. Uh, I have a game that I'm currently writing for, Chaosium. Um, I won't do any spoilers, but I will say it's uh, 1920s and we'll say bootlegging and just kind of leave it there. And the last thing that I'm working on, uh, just yesterday, I finished up a play test for The Pale Rider. It's my new alien uh, RPG game. That went really well. I've been getting feedback about it all morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good feedback, critical feedback. And um, I quickly realized that uh, I wrote a monster mash versus this super tense emotional drama that I was going for. So I'm running in that direction now. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So between horror and, you know, the horror of Alien, the horror of, of Chaosium's Call of Cthulhu, um, what, mm -hmm. uh, what attracts you about the horror genre? What, what has made it such a focus of your work? Oh, so I will say this, and this is a hill that I'm completely willing to die on. There is something about horror role players that just perform, operate, and execute on a higher quality. It's more immersive. It's more real. Uh, you're not hyper-focused on rules all the time or the combat mechanics. So you just get a, a much more colorful, much more organic game. And it's just a higher caliber of role players. And I said it, that's a hill I'll die on. So once I got introduced to horror, I was like, you guys all travel in the same circuits? Oh, it's like that in Cult? Oh, it's like that in Alien? Oh, it's like that in Dread too. Beautiful. Horror is my happy place. And I think the second thing that I love about horror is it gives you a really good insight into the human mind on what makes people tick, what makes them squirm, and most importantly, what makes them think. Because historically, you can go back through our history and see all the horrors that humans have done to other humans and the planet and animals and everything else. But why? What was the motivation? What makes somebody squirm? What makes somebody afraid? And that's just really fun to explore in horror. You're not going to get that when you're just casting fireball at a dragon. Absolutely. Is there a trope in horror that you find is particularly effective that always gets you? Oh, that always gets me? Yeah. Uh, hands down, it is the moral ambiguous decision making. It's like, you know what the right thing is to do, but what do you really want to do based on your character, based on the plot, based on what is happening? So those really tough decisions, especially when you're in such an immersive environment, are my favorite in horror. Those get me every single time, especially at the end. If we've gone through three and three hours and 45 minutes and the last 15 minutes, I have to make a decision that's just like, that lingers with me for days after. And then I try to like reproduce it in my future games. Is there a horror trope that doesn't quite land with you or that you find doesn't, hasn't been included so well in your work because it doesn't really resonate with your play style? I'll say a trope that doesn't quite resonate with my play style. That's a great question, by the way, Jamie, is pure blood and guts and horror. It has a place, it can be used cinematically, it can be used thematically, and it can be used great. But if I'm just sitting down for four hours, uh, going like door to door to door to door to door with just really horrible psychological or physically torturing stuff, that's not fun. Give me a story, give me a plot, give me something to interact with other than I walk through this hallway and there's something equally as terrible in this hallway as it was the last one. Great, let's do that for four hours. <laughs> that is a really good line. <laughs> <laughs> So let me ask you, you've seen kind of having been in, in the industry and in the hobby since you were a child and mm -hmm. seen the development of it for, for a while and, you know, moving through different pro professional products. Do you think mm -hmm. that there has been an evolving trend in horror role playing over the last uh, several years? Is the way that we tell horror stories changing in the face of uh, games like Alien and, you know, even in new editions of old games and, you um, TTRPGs like Rivers of London coming out? Human beings evolve over time. I mean, Jamie, you're not the same person yesterday that you were today. You're definitely not the same person you were 10 years ago. And human beings are creating these horror games and are creating these stories. So we are going to bring in our experiences, our biases, and market trends into what will sell, what will people enjoy. So there's definitely been an evolution in horror gaming from a human standpoint because humans are creating the material. Um, if anything else, I can definitely say 
I've seen a very beautiful branching out of horror. And I'm not just talking about like inclusivity or simpler rules or things of that nature, but really what does horror mean? Because Call of Cthulhu is a much different monster than cult. Cult caters to a different crowd. Cult caters to, you know, caters to a different crowd than dread. So I like seeing that variety as horror is expanding. So I like the diversity of the horror, how it's branching out to touch different people to, because horror means something different to every single person.